In this tutorial, what we're going to do is take a look at how to complete the first of the lessons in the Game of Life project. So in order to do all of this, we're going to be using a program called Microsoft Excel, which is a type of spreadsheet software, which is something that you can use to do anything that's going to involve some mathematics. And it's a really, really useful uh, program because you can use it in lots of different subject areas like geography and maths and systems of control and, of course, computer science. So the first thing that we're going to do is load up Excel and have a look at some basic ideas with it, and then we'll start looking at tackling this week one uh, this week one lesson. So I've got Excel loaded up just here and what I'm going to do first actually is I'm going to start with a blank workbook. So let's grab one of those. When you look at an Excel spreadsheet what you've got is lots and lots of different individual little rectangles and these are called cells. Every single cell has its own unique what's called a cell reference. So for example right now I'm highlighting cell B4. So I'm in column B, row 4, B4. Uh, this one here, this is C2 and, uh, and this one here is D three and you get the idea and also you can tell which cell you're in at any point because you're told in this top left corner just here. The first thing that makes Excel really really useful is its ability to spot patterns in numbers. So for example if I type in one and two and three then what I can actually do is use something called autocomplete or formula replication to, uh, to try and automatically spot the pattern that I've established here. The way you do it is like this. Start off by bringing the mouse over the first cell in your sequence and click and hold. Now I'm going to drag the mouse to the right so I'm highlighting a few cells like that in my pattern and now I'm going to release the left mouse button. So these cells are the ones that I've selected. What I'm then going to do is move the mouse over this little square in the bottom right hand corner. You can just see it here and you'll see as I move the mouse over that the mouse pointer changes to a little plus. I'm now going to click and hold the left mouse button again and now I'm going to drag to the right and release. And the computer guesses what it is that I want it to do and it automatically completes the pattern for me. Now counting up in a few numbers is all well and good, but what if I want to do something a little bit more ambitious? What if I want to produce, for example, a multiplication table? That might be quite a useful thing to do. Well, I've got a few bits of number here that I've uh, started to put in place. So uh, this time I'm going to grab these ones and let's see if it can spot the pattern there. And this also works vertically as well, so I could uh, come down here and grab a few vertically. Or I could do it, John, I've just got a couple of examples. Or, if I wanted to be a little bit more ambitious, I could actually grab a whole bunch of cells like this and see if the computer can spot a pattern with those. So that's given me a full multiplication square. I've got a few here that I don't want, so I can click once on those cells and then use the delete key, not backspace, but delete, to delete the contents of those cells. If I'd also actually made some of these bold or in different colours as well by changing things up here, then those also would have carried that over and I could have had a pattern of going red, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow or anything like that that I wanted as well. So that's the first thing we can do with a spreadsheet that's pretty handy. This also works when you write formulae, which we're going to look at now. Let's imagine a situation where I wanted to do some calculations. So maybe I wanted to use 4 and I wanted to multiply it by 6. Uh, it's a very, very simple example, but hopefully it'll give you enough of an idea of what I'm going with here. Uh, 4 multiplied by 6, and I'd like the answer to appear just here in cell F17. Well, what I need to do is I need to tell the computer I'd like to write a formula. And you do that by starting with an equal symbol. All formula always start with an equal symbol. And you can see as I'm typing, it's also appearing up here as well. I can type in either of these boxes. And what I want is I want this cell just here. Uh, and I'm just going to write this, the value for now. So it's 4, isn't it? And I want to multiply that on a computer. We use the asterisk. That's shift and 8. Uh, asterisk to multiply. I want it times 4 by 6. So you can see here equals 4 times 6 and hit enter. And what I'll see is I've got my result that's come up in the box. That's quite handy for quick calculations. And if I click on that cell you can see that in the formula bar, that's this thing here, it says equals 4 times 6. But down here I actually see the result of it. This is alright, but what if I changed it later on? What if I wanted it to be 6 times 6? Well, at the moment I've got to come back here and I've got to change that now to say 6 in order to keep matching it up. That's not an ideal situation to be in. It'd be much nicer if I could say to the computer, I'd like to take whatever's written here and multiply it by whatever's written here. And we can do that. So let's take a look at changing my formula a little bit. So this time, rather than saying 6 times 6, I'm just deleting that out, I want to say instead that I want the value in D17, and I want to multiply that by the value in D18. 18. So in my formula bar I can type in equals D17 
and the computer actually says, ah, you're talking about this, uh, times by, so asterisk D18, like that, and it draws a box around that one as well, and hit enter. So why this is really nice is that now I'm using this formula with cell references, with references to other cells, it means that I can come in here and say, well, actually, maybe that should be 10, suddenly the answer is 60. Maybe that should be 2.5, suddenly the answer is 25. And as I change these values, the computer will automatically recalculate for me on the fly. And that's very, very useful to us. There are a few other quick things we can do as well. Computers are very good at adding up numbers. Let's imagine I wanted to add up uh, all the numbers in this column just here. Well, using our newfound skill that we just had, I could click down here and say, right, so it's equals, uh, so we look, M3, so M3 plus M4 plus M5 plus M6, you can see where we're going with this, plus M7. And I could keep doing that and doing that and doing that, and the computer will top them all up for me. But that seems very time consuming. It'd be really bad as well if I had 100 numbers in here. Thankfully, there's an automatic summing feature that we can use to save a lot of time. It works like this. You start by selecting the things that you'd like to add together. So I've got my finger on the left mouse button still at the moment. I still haven't let go. What you then do is you make it go one more than the selection of numbers that you want. So I'm selecting an empty cell as well, just here like this. I can now let go with the left mouse button. And then I come up here and see there's a button that says auto sum and I can just click on that once. So what that does is it writes a formula for me. Let's look at that formula. It says equals sum, that seems quite sensible, and we've got some parentheses, some brackets, and I'm saying that I'd like to add up everything starting at M3, which is this one, going all the way up to M14, which is this one just here. And then we close the brackets. There's a little colon in the middle here as well, look, just to, uh, to separate them out. So that's quite handy. And what's also really good about this, I could do that again here, look, one more of there, I'll add that one all up. So if I wanted to add together all the numbers in a multiplication grid, then I could start to use some of the other ideas we've seen as well. Let's try this, look, if I grab all the numbers from here, down to here, and then down one more, so I've given the computer plenty of empty space to write the answers in, I can now use auto sum one more time, and I get all the totals from the two times, three times, four times, all the way up to 12 times tables. I can then take it once more to here and auto sum, and it will tell you that if you add together every number in a multiplication square, it adds up to 6,084. And I did all of that without having to type much for myself, which is pretty neat. So those are the basic, basic elements of adding and multiplying. You can also use take away. You can also use divide as well. So if I wanted to do 9 divided by 3, I could write a little formula to do that. That would be equals uh, this cell here. Sometimes it's quicker just to click on the one you want. Divide by is a forward slash. So uh, 17 forward slash that number just there. Click. And that'll give me the answer straight away. And again, just like before, I can change the numbers dynamically on the fly. So again, another really, really powerful feature. So those are the basic techniques you use, uh, need to use to get started with a spreadsheet. In the next tutorial, we'll look at applying these ideas here to a specific idea of organising our very own summer barbecue. I'll see you then.